Hi. Hey, welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. If you see me looking at the screen, touching myself, the screen, I'm trying to get the light right. <laughs> I either look like an angelic creature with no flaws and pale luminescent skin, or I look like something else. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm Crystal Crawford, and I called this week's episode, hey Kinga, if someone judges you, does that make you wrong? If someone judges you, does that make you wrong? Hey, Christine. Um, if you know anybody, guys, that would love this topic, will you share this with them? I'm gonna just share it so that people can find it, because uh, I get that this judgment thing is a big thing for most of us. Hi, Torgan. Hi, hi, Deanne. Hi, Wesley. <laughs> my people I love you um, okay what am I doing today so if someone judges you does that make you wrong does it so uh, let's see here if you were on my email list if you're on my email list you likely got I am I look so angelic right now and I mean I am but not really <laughs> hi Kareem I'm Mary Zeta. if you were on my email list or you follow me or whatever I wrote a blog yesterday about um, a very kind of epic event that happened two days ago with me and my current partner and um, it it the whole situation invited me to choosing beyond what I'd chosen before and so I really 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 wanted to talk about that more today I'm about to start a 37 day uh, exploration into projections expectations separations judgments and rejections that you're gonna be invited to yeah, probably starting Saturday um, and so I was I was looking at I, I mean I'm constantly looking at all this stuff right because I'm for me the target is consciousness for me the target is awareness for me the target is happiness and happiness did not come for me when I was busy avoiding judgment when I was avoiding judgment I was hiding and not being all of me and trying hi Merline uh, hi today I was not I was controlling myself I was doing all the things that aren't actually being me right when I was avoiding judgment but lately I've been really asking to be able to receive judgment and um, you know I mean we have lots if you guys have hung around access consciousness a lot you've heard different facilitators talk about that if you're willing to receive judgment you get five thousand dollars more that year per judgment you're willing to receive and if you're not willing to receive judgment you lose ten thousand dollars that year hi Corey um, and I always heard that and I and still to be honest with you that to me is a little bit like I really don't get that but what I did start to get is that in the unwillingness to receive just the presence of judgment or judgments towards me that I I was resisting and reacting to something and that was the part for me that actually started to change my willingness to change this. Um, so you gotta look at this for yourself. If somebody judges you, does that make you wrong? Now, the logical answer is no, they're just assholes. But the illogical answer to that is what's running our lives, most of us. And so, I was sort of just looking at this whole topic and I'm like, what's the conversation that we could actually have of like, why we, for what reason would we avoid judgment? What have we decided judgment is? What is more real about that reality than the life we'd like to have or the way we'd like to feel in our lives? Or hi Claire, hi Camilla. Um, what is it about judgment that we've just made more real? Is it, is it that we can feel it? We can, so we, so we think that it's more real. Is it that, what is it? And I had a really epic call with Shannon O'Hara the other day in The Business of Succeeding, which is a class I'm taking with her right now, that talked a lot about that we had we had like a three minute conversation about money and um, money and receiving. Because we talk about like, so judgment and money and receiving is really the same conversation. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Gabrielle. Hi, Christina. Um, and one of the things she said to me was really struck me. And it was that we've made judgment the dominant real reality and receiving we've made oh no this is what it was we make money this solid thing right we make money cash or gold or whatever but in reality money's a concept same with actually judgment judgments and energy but we've made those two things real and solid and we've made receiving which is the conversation that we have all the time about why you get your bars run and what you have to be willing to be so that you can receive and have the life that you'd like to have. We've made receiving the fantasy reality. 
She's like, what would it be like to actually substantiate receiving as the reality instead of as a fantasy reality? Okay, so I'm going to tell you a story <laughs> about how this is showing up for me. And I might even read to you a little bit out of the Projections Expectations book because it's so good. Um, but so... So in this whole exploration of this topic for myself in what it takes to actually succeed at what I'd like to create in the world and what it would take to have, you know, more money than God and what it would take to be happier, furiously and viciously happy all the time. That's an ongoing exploration for me. What it would take to forward, move forward the energies of what I would like my life to be so that it can show up for me in totality, right? That's the conversation that I'm in right now with myself, with the universe. And so in that conversation, our different choices are, are presented to me as available. And one of the things that I really desired to get out of being me this year was to stop resisting. It was, was really to get out of resistance of anything. So like if somebody was in my presence and they were doing a lot of judgment of themselves or they were choosing to be unhappy or they were choosing less than I knew was possible for them to actually be an allowance of that. Now allowance is very different than acceptance. Acceptance is, um, you're, you have to, you just have to accept it. You know, you just have to accept it. Whereas allowance is you're the rock in the stream and everything's just interesting. It's just an interesting point of view. And I was like, what would it be like to actually not, to just be all that I am, create and be all that I am in the world, and to be an allowance of everybody around me, especially the people closest to me, which were the people that I tended to abuse with trying to help them. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't actually desire to be that person anymore. I'd like to receive, just receive, receive. Let's just receive all the information. Let's receive all the information about me. Let's receive all the information about them. Let's just receive, right? What would that even be like? So, so my current relationship is such a gift in so many ways. And one of the ways that it's been a gift to me is, is receiving choices that he makes that I see are destructive to his body and destructive to his being that for me are not, are for me are choices that I'm actively like choosing beyond for myself that, that he may or may, he, that he's doing something different with because it works for him. Um, and so I've been really playing with just what can I be no perceive and receive here that would just what be what can I be here that would that would just create and be something different number 1 but the second thing that was more valuable to me was to be willing to have my reality with happiness no matter what he was choosing. And actually I've been practicing this and playing with this with everybody. My reality is actually one of ease, joy, and glory. That is actually my reality. My reality is happiness. My reality is ease, joy, and glory. And I'm having it more often than ever before. But what would tend to happen is if I'd get in the presence of somebody else that was doing judgment or doing projections and expectations, I would just abandon my reality for their reality because their reality was more real to me, right? Their re I needed to validate their reality somehow. I needed to like let go of my happiness and let go of my ease, joy, and glory to somehow because their re I could perceive their reality and that made it... I don't even know, you know, the whole list of reasons why you do that. So I would just give up on mine. But I about, I don't know, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, and I think again, I wrote a blog about it. I just made a different choice. I woke up that morning and I, up to that morning, every single morning I'd wake up, I was like head tripping and going into like all the, uh, the judgments of my day and trying to figure out if I was good enough that day or what I could create. Like it was a mess. And I woke up that morning and I was doing the same thing and I literally looked myself in the mirror and I was like, you can keep doing this or you could literally just choose something different. And that was the day that I played an access class called Happiness is Just a Choice and I was listening to it all morning and I heard a conversation on there that just changed my whole world. And it was around how aware I am of everybody's thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Um, and I'll get to those questions. Thank you all for putting those in here. It was around like... I. It, how aware I am of everybody. I, and, and it was so funny because that one acknowledgement that I'm just aware of everybody else's reality and then I make it mine gave me my reality, which was actually my reality is really fucking happy and I'm going to choose it no matter who's, who else is choosing what else. Because at that point, it was like, it doesn't matter what you choose anymore. I am going to have my reality. And I'm going to be my reality around you. And if you want to be unhappy around me, you can do that. But it might be a lot more work. <laughs> and so I started just being that. Well, guess what? Being that in the presence of somebody who typically chose things that were where the predominant point of view was everything sucks, he started getting happier. 
Because he, I mean, it's like really, really hard to hold on to your unhappiness when you're around somebody who just thinks everything's funny. <laughs> so that was the beginning of me stop, like no matter what the judgment was even of how happy I was or how that even looked to anybody else or what they thought of that or what it showed up as, I was having it. Fuck it, right? So that was the beginning of like being willing to receive whatever judgments came with whatever because I'm going to have what I, I'm going to get out of what I want to get out of being on this planet. And for me, that was this joy bit, right? Well, Fast forward, I'm going to get to your question, I will, but fast forward to like a couple days ago and one of the things that happened was that something occurred, I said something, he took it a certain way and he went to a bunch of conclusions about it and then threw it back in my court as my problem. And this has been one of the other things that I've had to really not, I've had to practice not giving up on myself with is that judgment can show up in all kinds of ways. It can be something that people silently do inside themselves that you're just aware of. It can also be something that they project at you as your problem. And I, I put a post on Facebook a couple days ago that said, people only accuse you of what they themselves are doing, which was a piece of information that initially I forget many, many times. When somebody comes at me with like, you did this, this, and this, it made me feel this way, and you need to do something different, I have been known to just forget that I have awareness and just go straight into the wrongness of me and trying to figure out where they're right. Because they must be right, right? Because they're saying something? Which, by the way, ties into the projections and expectations conversation because if you are projecting and expecting that if somebody says something to you, they must be right, you have to judge and separate and reject you. God, seriously. So two days ago was the first time when this thing occurred and I was like, I'm not actually wrong, not from I'm right, but I'm, I'm not wrong, I'm not wrong, I'm not wrong, I'm not wrong, I'm not wrong. You're not wrong. You're actually never wrong. In fact, the moment that you go into trying to find the wrongness of you, you've given up on you. The moment you go into trying to figure out what you did wrong, why you're wrong, why you're guilty, why you should feel bad, that moment, you've abandoned you completely and you're in a lie. The wrongness of you is an absolute lie. So. So I got this message from him and it was this, this, and this, and you need to do this. And I looked at that and I'm like, actually, no, I don't. And you need to back the fuck up. <laughs> You're not going to do that to me. You actually, you can judge all you want in your own space. I can be aware of it. That's fine. You don't get to put that on me. That is not mine. And it was the first time where I was like, people only accuse you of what they're doing and you don't get to treat me like that came into play. And I got to see how many times that I had just been like, well, I'm strong enough to deal with this. I'm, I can take this. I can tolerate this. I probably did do something that was a little off kilter anyway. I probably did do something wrong. Letting other people's judgments and feelings control me. This was the first time where I was like, you can have all your feelings. You can have all your conclusions about what it is you think I did. But you cannot put that back on me as something that I did wrong. I will not let you do that anymore. And it was so, it was such a place of strength. And for the first time I actually got the gift of receiving, I received it. I was like, cool, that's a whole lot of judgment and a whole lot of conclusion. And I get how that works for you and that will not work to create this anymore. So we will have to make a different choice here. And that opened us up to having a, such a fucking gift of a conversation. It also opened us up to the possibility of losing something. But both of us, I just put it on the table. I'm like, look, I, I'm willing to lose this. I'm not willing to lose me anymore, but I'm willing to lose this. So what is the conversation that we can actually have here that would include both of us? Where I got to be included as the difference that I am, and you got to be included as the difference that you are, and we got to enjoy each other simultaneously. Is that a possibility? But I would not have been able to have that conversation if judgment was more real to me than my awareness. So where have you made judgment more real than your awareness? And everything that is, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys, man. Now what do I mean by that? Well, my awareness of people only accuse you of what they themselves are doing. That created so much lightness in my world. I'm like, oh, oh, he's doing that. I'm not doing that. He's doing Oh, that's so cool. That's such great information, right? That actually created space in my world, lightness in my world. That was awareness. I didn't give that up this time. I didn't give that up in lieu of feelings or judgments that somebody else was having. 
which then invited him to something different. And he told me, he, I, I am so grateful he's in my life. He's, he told me later, he's like, I'm actually really glad that you, I, cause I fought, I fought for my reality that day. And I've been talking about fighting for, and there is a whole other conversation of fighting for or against that's not the conversation I'm having. This was, I am gonna have this reality of peace, ease, and joy. And if you wanna contribute to that, you're invited. And if this is something that you need to destroy, you're not invited to my party anymore. But that invited him to a different choice. It was such a gift. And this, I think one of the things that happens for us around judgment is we buy the lie that if we receive judgment or we perceive it or we are willing to know that somebody close to us functions from judgment, that either we'll be destroyed or we'll have to lose the relationship or all this series of stuff that's destructive, right? We buy all that shit. And so we don't actually stand up in our own awareness and go, no, I actually know what's true here. I'm aware. I'm not wrong. And if you'd like to have a different conversation with me, then that's something we can do. We don't do that. We just give ourselves up. So what would it be like to actually be willing to know the good, the bad, and the ugly about everybody? Everybody's got it, even you, by the way. What would it be like to be willing to know the good, the bad, and the ugly about you? And what ugly about you are you refusing to know that if you would allow yourself to know it would give you an awareness of the ugly in everybody else that would set you free? <laughs> and everything that doesn't allow that, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, give bad, pod, pod, golly, shirts, boys and beyonds. Okay, I'm going back and I'm going to read your questions because you guys are so awesome. Hold on. Um, Miriam says, I'm not good at it. I have a Facebook page, but no one is seeing my Facebook page. Okay, Miriam, that's a whole other question. I'm going to be doing a call on hiding in plain sight. Don't you worry, that's coming. Um, how do you have your rea- Oh, gosh. How do you have- Oh, I can't press see more. Oh, it's not letting me see more, you guys. How do you- No. Uh. Okay, that's silly. It's got see more, but then it won't, when you click on it, it doesn't let you see more. I can't see it. How do you have your reality and not separate from the others that choose something that doesn't create? Okay, so here's the thing, okay? The only things that create separation are projections and expectations, okay? So if you're projecting and expecting that your partner, that your family, that your business, that your that money, if you're projecting and expecting of anybody or anything, you have to separate, judge, and reject. So the how do you have your reality and not separate is don't project and expect of anybody. Now, that's, you know, just don't do it, stop it. <laughs> it's basically the tool. But, you know, I get it. Like, we're, we've, I functioned from projections and expectations of people and things dynamically. In fact, I was just talking to my mom last night, and that relationship's getting so easy now because I'm just willing to let her be herself. But it really, it's every time I talk to her, I'm washed again in the past of, like, how we functioned as a family. And we were constantly offended and had hurt feelings and were separating from each other because we had so many projections and expectations of how the other people should be, of how family should be, of how my mom should be, of what it's, what it should... Oh, my sister would yell at me for like being the worst older sister ever because I didn't fulfill her projections and expectations of what an older sister should be. So that's the only time you separate is when you're projecting and expecting, which is why I'm going to do this series. And there is a book too that you guys can buy, Pez Juniors, Projections, Expectations, Separations, Judgments, and Rejections. But the reason to look at these is not not just, not just not because of like, oh, this is the conscious thing to do. It's going... Hey, are these making my life work? <laughs> this is the thing that I keep coming back around to with everything. Like, is my life working with projections and expectations? Does it actually make my life work? No, it makes it harder because then I separate and I judge and I reject. And then I get to be separated from and judged and rejected. That was one of the things I said to my partner. I'm like, you don't get to judge that what you've decided is real is real and what I am being is not real. Like, I mean, you can do that, but what that's going to do is that's going to create this wedge between us. If you judge that what you're doing is true and real and what I'm doing isn't true and real, then you constantly have to be in judgment of me. He asked me what he could do that's different. I'm like, stop judging me. If you can do that, cool. And if you can't, cool, then we get to see what that creates. But I'm like, that judgment, that projection and expectation that something should be a certain way causes the separation, judgment, and rejection. So where are you doing that and where could you stop and just become aware that you're doing it? 
And listen, your reality as an infinite as an infinite being is an ever mutable changing thing. If this is not, we keep kind of going along this thing of like, I have to find my reality with this. What's my reality with it? Well, your reality could be this one day, like some, some days my reality is coffee in the morning and some days my reality is tea in the morning. And some days my reality is sex and some days my reality is celibacy. And some days my reality is $100 million business and some days my reality is a $500 billion business and other days it's a $0 business. And some days my reality is black and other days my reality is wet hair and other days my reality is pink eyeshadow and other days my reality is purple eyeshadow. So my, my reality is a mutable changing thing. And if so, would an infinite being have one reality is the question you can ask. Would they actually have one reality? No. So what is then, what is the thing that you'd like, what's the valuable product? Is it your reality? Is it your awareness? Is it something else? You have a capacity for awareness that is beyond what anybody else on the planet has ever seen. How do I know? Because most of the time you feel fucked up or sad or depressed or broke which by the way, none of which are yours. 98%, what if 98% of all your thoughts, feelings, and emotions and points of view weren't yours? That those, the fact that you have them all is an indicator of how much capacity for awareness you have. So what is the valuable product to you? Is the valuable product a fixed result? Is the valuable product, uh, you know, or is the valuable product having your awareness so that you can navigate your life and actually create what works? You cannot create a life that works if you're not willing to have your awareness. And your awareness includes all the good things, all the bad things, all the ugly things about every single being on the planet, including you. Um, I can't press see more on your comments, you guys. It's frustrating. So I can only see a little bit of them. So Christine said, I'm in a space of choosing what would create more in my life and business, even if that means changing. Cool. <laughs> I've been in that similar situations. Yep, then I'm wrong. I chose different as well as strength. Cool. Um, yep, I'm in fear of losing the relationship, but I want to do things differently this time. I love you guys. So, I mean, there's so many different tools that you can use for this. Um, if this whole, how do I identify the projections and expectations so that I can stop them? Yes, that's a great, great fucking question, Paige. So, Anytime you're unhappy, anytime you're struggling, anytime you're feeling broke, anytime you're feeling sad, anytime you're feeling anything angry, aside from total gratitude for being alive and the joy of living, <laughs> you're in somebody else's reality and functioning from projections and expectations. Okay? So great sign is, are, do you spend 99% of your day happy or do you spend 99% of your day head tripping and judging and making yourself wrong? <laughs> You're in projections and expectations, okay? <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, isn't saying that seeing all the good, bad, and the ugly a judgment in and of itself? It isn't. And let me tell you, this is such a great question. Thank you for that question. We as, as humanoid beings, and if you don't know what a humanoid is, ask me. Private message me. We as humanoid beings think that negative information is judgment and positive information is awareness. That is not true. Sometimes awareness is that person's an asshole. Sometimes awareness is that person's a cunt. Sometimes awareness is that person is an evil little fuck. That's just awareness. That's just true. How do I know? Because when you have an awareness like that and you say it, it makes you feel lighter. What's light for you is true for you. What's heavy is a lie. So we decide that negative information is a judgment, but that's incorrect. Awareness is, okay, so, um, if you look at the earth, right? If you look at the earth and you look at tornadoes and tsunamis and wildfires, well, actually wildfires is a great example. If there were no humans on the planet, wildfires would still exist and there'd be no judgment about them and the forest would rejuvenate itself with them. In fact, if you read information on the internet about wildfires, they are one of, they are one of the earth's methods of generating and creating new growth, new things, newness. But we've decided they're wrong and we've decided they're bad. So there's all of this press about them and stuff in the news about them. And we've got people's houses are in the way sometimes. And so we've decided these are bad things. They're just things. A wildfire is just a wildfire. A tornado is just a tornado. A hurricane is just a hurricane. It's only bad because we make it bad. Because we put this judgment on it that it's destructive. Is it destructive? Sure. But consciousness includes destruction too. And in fact, destruction creates room for more life. So 
So awareness just includes everything. So if, for example, you exclude the awareness of that dog shit exists. Dog shit can't exist. Dog shit is bad, it's wrong, it shouldn't exist, dog shit. And actually Gary Douglas tells a story about this, how there was a time when he hadn't included dog shit in his awareness. So he was constantly stepping in it, but he didn't realize what he was doing except he just kept stepping in it, he kept stepping in it. And he, he asked himself, have I included dog shit in my awareness? And he got a no. So he started including dog shit in his awareness. And guess what happened? The next day he walked out of the house, he almost put his foot down, he got a hitch in his gitch, pulled his foot back up and right underneath it was dog shit. So now that he was willing to be aware of it, he didn't have to step in it anymore. So it's the same as true of abusive people or violent people or mean people or evil people. They exist. People that are like that exist. Judgmental people exist. If you don't, if you don't want to know that they exist, you will be abused by them. So if you're projecting and expecting that everybody else in the world has the same agenda that you do or the same desire for peace or kindness or consciousness that you do or the same anything that you do, you are going to be abused by the people that actually have no interest in that whatsoever. Because you're so busy projecting and expecting that of course they're like you, that you can't actually be aware of what they are. So that's the, 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 the catch with projections and expectations is they absolutely and utterly cut you off from your awareness. And the only thing that the superpower that you have that we keep cutting ourselves off from is your awareness. As soon as you're willing to be aware of the good, the bad, and the ugly of you, and the good, the bad, and the ugly of everybody else, then you can create. Then it's like, okay, cool, you just did judgment. You just did it at me. That's no longer okay with me. We're gonna have to have a different conversation. What can we create from here, right? Oh, you're an asshole. Oh, great, okay, cool. Do I need to do anything with that? Yes or no? No, all right, I just, I get the information you're an asshole. I may or may not let you into this part of my life because that doesn't really work for me or whatever, right? It just lets you be aware of people. You can also be aware of when somebody's really and truly functioning from actual kindness, actual generosity of spirit, actual consciousness, actual awareness. You can be aware of all of it. But the things that you are projecting and expecting don't exist because they're not what you would choose are the things that are always going to abuse you and trip you up. And they're also the things that you can't receive about you. Are you willing to know how abusive you can be? Are you willing to know the killer that you could truly be? Are you willing to know the aggressor that you could truly be, that you are, that you're resisting? Are you resisting being a killer because you've decided that it's wrong? Did you know that you have to be willing to be a killer to be the healer that you are because otherwise you're not willing to be the energy that would kill all limitations? What have you judged about you that you're resisting and not being that if you would allow yourself to be it would actually open you to being all that you are, to the gift that you came here to be? What are you unwilling to receive about you? What judgments do you have of you that you've been unwilling to receive about you that if you were willing to receive them would completely change all realities? And everything that doesn't allow that to show up, will you destroy it and create all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all in shorts, boys and beyonds. So, if someone judges you, are you wrong? If it's still a yes, go, okay, so what am I not willing to be aware of here? Where am I not willing to be aware of judgment? Where am I judging myself that I'm not willing to look at? What do I judge myself for? What am I not willing to be that if I were willing to be it, that I truly could choose to be? What am I not willing to be that I truly could choose to be that if I were willing to be it would change all realities and unrealities and manifest as huge amounts of money and a life that I haven't been willing to have? And everything that doesn't allow that to show up, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Where are you projecting and expecting that everybody else is like you? That is creating the separation, the judgment, and the rejection of you, and the abuse of you, and the unhappiness of you. And what would it be like to choose to be what you'd like to be, and to never project and expect that anybody else even has that choice available? You have choices available to you that nobody else on the planet has. One of them is awareness. And a lot of them I can't articulate, but you've got them and nobody else has them. So when are you going to be willing to claim and own and acknowledge the choices you have available to you for allowance, for choice, for creation, for joy, for happiness, for ease with money, for abundance? When are you going to be willing to claim, own, and acknowledge those? 
And also claim on and acknowledge how much you judge yourself for how evil you think you are, how destructive you think you might be, how aggressive you think you are, right? What if all of it was just an interesting point of view? What if there's way more right about you than you've ever gotten? And what if you being willing to begin to notice when you're functioning from projections and expectations is the choice that will begin to create a totally different reality? I'm going to leave it right there. Drop the mic. If you got anything out of this, I would be so grateful if you would share it with people. And I will, you'll be invited to my 37 day thing. You're always invited. And otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Thank you.